Hello and welcome back to another Vocking tutorial. Today we're going to go over the XYZ, how it applies to movement and physics. If you're not used to using 3D engines, it might seem a little daunting, but once you get the hang of it, it's actually rather intuitive. So with that said, let's get started. All right, so when you explore events, you'll notice that you have a few runtime commands under the event tab. One is called make event walk. However, you're presented with some directions and you might not know how these apply to the 3D space. So we're going to go over that. And then the other thing is that if you go to events, that you'll have a move event with physics engine. And you'll see the coordinates right here, but you might not understand how the force applies to it. So these are the two specific things we're going to go over. And just note that player has this as well. Make player walk and move player with physics engine. So you'll be able to understand both of those once we go over these. All right, so first I'm going to delete the physics engine and I'm going to click OK. So next I want to show you the two gizmos that you're going to need on the maps. This is a very helpful gizmo where it shows you your X, your Y, and your Z. You can actually click on them and they'll take you to that access specifically. The other one is when you press W on an event, you get the little gizmo for the X, the Y, and the Z as well. One other thing to show about these gizmos is that they stay consistent no matter how you're moving your scene camera around. So you will always know that they are going to be consistent directions. All right, so let's see how this correlates. There is actually a cool graphic here which is going to show you everything you need to know about the axis directions and physics. So let's start here with the X axis. So we can see the head of the gizmo is right here, and then there's nothing on this end. And if we go to Bakking, we can see that it is set up the same way. The head of the axis is right here, and same with this gizmo. So we know that if we're pointing this way, then we are going to be going east. And so quickly, if we go to events here, and we click on the make event walk, we can see that going east is going to point us towards the X gizmo head. And that's a sim the simplest way you can think about it. Now, if we actually put this in repeat only once parallel and go to play test this, we'll see that they indeed walk one tile to the east. So now if we go back to the chart, we can easily find the other directions. Notice that the Y axis isn't on that at all as we're only moving northeast, south, and west. So we would only be paying attention to this Z axis and the X axis as far as that move event goes. All right, so now we can move on to the physics part. Along with each axis having a couple directions, we can also see that it has a positive and a negative value depending from the center on where it goes. So if the X axis is headed east, it's going to be positive. If it's headed west, it's going to be negative. Same thing goes for the Z. If it's headed north, it's going to be negative. If it's headed south, it's going to be positive. Now these also correlate with Bakking. We can go in here and go to the event, and we can get rid of this now and add the physics. And so we can see right here, the X, how much value do we want to add? So I'm gonna click okay, and I want this character to move this way, which is west, because we know that with this gizmo pointing this way, it's east. We also know that going east is positive. So that means that I want to go negative to get that direction. So I'm gonna click back into here, and we're going to give it a number like negative 300. Again, this is parallels only running once. If you were having a parallel event going repeat, then you're going to want this to be a little lower value. I'm going to hit OK and play test and see that indeed it's going to push me west. One nice thing about moving with physics is that you can actually move in multi direction. So, for instance, if we wanted to move, say, southwest, we could actually do that by applying a negative X and a positive Z. So, I can just show this real quick. We can go into the event. We can add in a positive Z. And with that, we should move in a southwest direction. There we go. Now, the last thing we can do, just real quick to show, is that you can actually add a Y to that as well. So let's say that we wanted a little hop as we're moving. We can have a little hop there. And then the last thing I'll just show off real quick is that you can actually make an even simpler jump by just adding in force right here. The only thing is, is you lose some control because jumping in the other video that I did where you have a weight as the fall goes down, you can actually break up your events better. So I think cutscene wise, the other methods better, but this might be a nice little hop. And there we go, just a nice little hop. So yeah, I hope this video was helpful. Any questions, comments below, Steam Forms, we'll get you figured out. With that said, I'll see you at the next video.